Yo, what is going on guys? It's Totem TV here back at it again for another YouTube video. We are only 22 days away from the worldwide release of Silent Hill 2, one of the greatest psychological horror games ever to be made. For those who pre-ordered the Deluxe Edition, they will be able to play the game 48 hours early on October 6th. The automatic preload will happen on Friday, October 4th. In this video, I will be sharing the latest news and information we know so far about the remake. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. With that being said, let's begin. Several weeks ago, new images surfaced on the internet showing us in-game profiles for James, Maria, Angela, Laura, and Eddie, confirming the actors who are playing them as well as their character description. James Sunderland will be played by Luke Roberts. This will be Luke Roberts' first motion and voice captured performance in a video game. His first and only performance in a video game was for Risen 2 Dark Waters, where he voiced the nameless hero. James' description reads, the protagonist of the story, after receiving a letter addressed from his late wife, James travels to Silent Hill in search of answers. Maria will be played by Slume Quinestorte. Maria's redesign was inspired by Takayoshi Sato's original sketches of her, and the remake will have her leopard print as seen in the most recent story trailer. Maria's description reads, a woman who looks exactly like James' late wife. However, her hairstyle, taste in clothing, and even her cheerful and energetic personality are completely different from Mary's. After learning of James' purpose in Silent Hill, Maria takes an interest in his search and accompanies him. Angela Orozco will be played by Guiana Keel. Angela's description reads, a somewhat despondent young woman James first meets in the cemetery. A visitor to Silent Hill like James, she is apparently searching for her mother. Angela was supposed to be between 16 and 19 years old. This refers to the original intent where in the Book of Lost Memories in game explains this. Team Silent opted to portray her childhood abuse and stress through her appearances whereas Bloober Team seems to be doing so through her voice. Laura will be played by Evie Templeton. Evie will also be playing as Laura in the upcoming Return to Silent Hill movie directed by Christopher Gans, who previously directed Silent Hill, released in 2006. Laura's description reads, a little girl who occasionally crosses James' path throughout his search, then just as quickly disappears. She seems to know something about Mary. Eddie Dombrowski will be voiced by Scott Haining and motion captured by Danny Crane. Eddie's character was inspired by character Private Leonard Gomer Pyle from the 1987 film Full Metal Jacket. The description reads, Eddie is a simple, sluggish, and generally useless man who is deeply terrified of getting hurt. He is another visitor to Silent Hill, but it's unclear what he came for. A recent post by Bloober Team's creative director and lead designer Matt Leonard reads, Yes. This is one of my favorite features in the game. If you're looking for pop-up objectives to guide you through, you won't find it here. In the video, James picks up a Bart and Lee's matchbook from the ground with no pointer or icon to guide the player. Matt goes on to state that James will annotate his discoveries on the map you discover in the game. He also confirms that there will be an OG experience setting you can toggle as well as other settings that can be manually optimized to fit your playstyle. Visual options that can be turned on or off for the immersion factor include interactions with items and traversal points, health level via the bloody border, ammunition count, and reticule while aiming. There are other options Matt did not specifically mention, but I could only imagine things like turning off the item pickup sound and a visual cue displayed on the side of the screen. Items will still be accessible through an inventory menu screen, like the original, displaying items like notes, letters, books, puzzle pieces, ammunitions, weapons, and health drinks. We are also getting a new visual design for the save menu screen, reminiscent of the original. The classic, easy, normal, and hard mode are also confirmed to be making their way back into the remake for both combat and puzzles. There will be a 90s grain filter option players can turn on or off if they want to get a more nostalgic experience of the original game. If you pay close enough attention, you'll see this in the story trailer that we got recently. Silent Hill 2 Remake will utilize Unreal Engine 5, a game engine that offers improved features including Nanite Virtualized Geometry System and Lumen Global Illumination System, allowing for more realistic and detailed environments, characters, and objectives, and objects with lifelike lighting. This paired with Bloober Team's master-like environmental design will show us the true depiction and nature of Silent Hill, which will be completely and utterly horrifying. Viewing the map in the game will be more realistic and therefore trickier depending on how well lit the area is. The map in this clip is affected by the light in the environment. In the original, the map could not be seen at all if there was no light. This is such a big deal because little details like this add up when it comes to an immersive experience. When Matt was asked by a fan what his team was most proud of during the development phase, he responded, I'm proud of everything truly, but if I needed to choose, I think the general flow of the game and new level design and puzzles approach. I believe we've been able to find a nice balance between the 
memory of the original locations and new content that will be able to surprise even the longtime fans of Silent Hill 2. The exciting thing Matt mentions here was new content. This means old fans returning will be able to experience Silent Hill 2 in a refreshing way while still being familiar with what they knew 20 years ago. Some of the new content they refer to are new areas to explore, buildings to enter, and puzzles to solve. This means that there will be new items to find and the possibility of new lore related to the monsters and characters found in Silent Hill 2. I took particular interest in some of the fans' questions based on what we have seen mechanically in the game. Some fans were curious on why James didn't crouch to pick up the matches by the dead body in the street. Matt responds to this with, It's a good example of one of those game developer battles between realism and fluidity of the game. We need to make such decisions, sometimes sacrificing realism to not stop the player and change the shape of the movement too much. Another asked, was there a reason the safe square was moved to the top of the well rather than being at the very bottom? In response, Matt says, It serves as a save point tutorial in that case. We have tested the original you were talking about, of course. It didn't work well, unfortunately. We needed to make this change to unify the safe spots mechanic in the game for the players to understand what is happening. It is confirmed that the six original endings are making their way back. Additionally, there will be new endings. The first playthrough will take approximately 16 to 18 hours with minimal exploration. This means that for completionists, expect to be committing 30 or more hours in the game. I hope I was able to provide you with exciting and new details surfacing over the past couple of weeks. And if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on all notifications so you know first thing when I post a new video. Let me know in the comments what you look forward to the most and what difficulties and settings you will be doing on your first playthrough. With 22 days remaining, let the countdown begin, guys. October is right around the corner. We're almost there. Thanks for stopping by guys and i'll see you in the next one